So when the first trailers of the Ahsoka show came out, fans were shocked to see Sabine wielding a lightsaber. Many fans were weary and said, well, as long as she doesn't use the Force, it's fine, because she did train saber fighting with Kanan. Then we saw a trailer with her sticking her hand out, which looked like she was using the Force. Fans got angry, and for good reason. Too many Star Wars characters are being given Force powers. This makes the story feel small, because we know there's so much of the galaxy that doesn't have the ability to use the Force. One thing we do know is that Dave loves Star Wars and we know he wouldn't want to let the fans down or get them angry. Somehow, Dave manages to make this work while also deepening the lore of Star Wars. This goes to show the genius of Dave Filoni. So let's talk about how Dave set up Sabine's character for success. First of all, we know that Sabine and Ahsoka were at one point master and apprentice. So during that time together, Sabine of course got her saber to saber combat improved. That's a given because she is Mandalorian. She's a warrior. One question remains is could she use the force? I'll bet that she could use the force a little, but she was never good or powerful at it. This is probably why the two had a falling out as she probably pushed Sabine to be better and better but Sabine couldn't catch up. Anakin pushed Ahsoka to her limits constantly, and I don't think Sabine could handle it with her limits in the Force. But I'm not okay with just saying Sabine was a plain quitter, because I don't believe that. I've watched Rebels twice, and nothing in that show gave me any hints that this would happen. Of course, characters do change, and Disney does like to deconstruct characters, but again, I'm not okay with just accepting this. So I have a theory on why she never met her potential of being a Jedi. So at the finale of Star Wars Rebels, Ezra's last conversation with Sabine is where he said he needed to do this, and she covered for him by basically distracting Hera so Ezra could sneak away and surrender himself to Thrawn. He had also left holograms for her. I think she feels some sort of guilt for Ezra's disappearance. I mean, they were thinking of alternatives to Ezra surrendering. Hera had an idea of trying to get the shield activated again. So Sabine letting Ezra go and letting him handle itself clearly left some regret. She probably thinks about how things may have turned out if she didn't let Ezra sneak out. She clearly had a deep attachment to Ezra and she never will let go of that. This probably held her back in training because a Jedi needs their mind to be clear. She probably left Ahsoka because Ahsoka told her she would no longer train her. Either way, Ahsoka clearly understood that regardless of Sabine's weak force abilities, she was held back by her attachment to Ezra. Now that all kind of makes sense, and most fans, I'm sure, could come to a conclusion similar to this. But I think there's a little more to this, and this is something that I haven't seen talked about in the Star Wars community. I believe this is the reason that Ahsoka didn't train Grogu. In Mando Season 2, Ahsoka bluntly tells Mando that she can't train Grogu because of his attachment to Mando. When this came out, many fans had some questions on why she would say this and why she hasn't moved on past the old Jedi ways. And this is because she knows from experience from training Sabine that people with attachments are hard to train because they never let go. This is why I think Dave is perfect for Star Wars, because he actually makes everything that he does connect in a meaningful way. Then in Episode 2, Dave has Hu Yang tell Sabine bluntly that she is too weak in the Force and that she wouldn't be accepted into the Jedi Order. I actually think this is a perfect way for a good character arc, and I love that Dave added this. This is sort of similar to Obi-Wan. Obi-Wan wasn't as weak in the Force as Sabine, but he did struggle a lot. He struggled in lightsaber combat as well. He was a really bad Padawan but he worked so hard constantly to a point where many consider him one of the best Jedi in the Order, and he also equaled Anakin in the Force in Revenge of the Sith. This is sort of repetitive, but it's an amazing thing about Star Wars. People who basically equal nothing become something great. I like the fact that Sabine has a low midichlorian count, so she'll have to work extremely hard under Ahsoka to reach true strengths. That's much better than just closing your eyes and saying the Force and immediately getting magical powers. But most importantly, I like that Dave is introducing the idea of people who have low midichlorian counts and how they can be good at the Force, but they just have to try for it. Because before this show, it wasn't clear whether everyone had the ability to use the Force. Lucasfilm throughout its years of existence has said that everyone has some midichlorian count, but then also said that you're either Force sensitive or you're not. 
Dave ended this debate by Hu Yang saying that she's extremely weak in the force, but that also means that she does have some force powers. So again, this is why Dave is perfect for Star Wars, because he settled our nerves by telling us that Sabine is weak in the force, while also providing that she has a path to become strong. He made it make sense, while also making every character have more depth. This is what Dave does. When he makes projects about characters that we have seen before, Rather than people like Joby Harold who made the Obi-Wan show which doesn't feel like canon and leaves so many unanswered questions due to lazy writing, Dave makes the characters better. Now there's one thing about the Ahsoka show that is making people skeptical. That is the amount of time we are spending on the character Sabine. In just the first two episodes, the show has mostly been focused on Sabine rather than Ahsoka. This is giving people Reva vibes, but in my opinion this is absolutely nothing to worry about. The Obi-Wan show would have been better if the conflict was mostly between Obi-Wan and Vader rather than Reva, but this doesn't really apply when it comes to the character Ahsoka. Ahsoka has an enormous amount of screen time where she has had so many character arcs and so much character development. I just don't think she needed much character work done in the first two episodes. I get it's her show and she will experience character growth later in the season based off the rumors that we have seen, but I don't think for the first two episodes it was 100% necessary. Dave clearly doesn't want to deconstruct her character by making her broken and then building her back up. She has been through things like that before. So Dave is giving her a Padawan, which is better than that. If you want a character to grow in Star Wars and you don't want to tear the character apart, then you give a character an apprentice. They did this to Anakin in the Clone Wars. In the Clone Wars, they give Anakin an apprentice so that it would make sense why he matured so much between Attack of the Clones and Revenge of the Sith. It's a good strategy to make a character mature without making up some random, unimportant character hurdle to jump over just for the sake of the show. I like this idea and I think Ahsoka will be a good master. I like what Dave is doing with Sabine's character and I have such high hopes for this show. Thanks for watching. I trust in Dave and I hope this video explains why he's a genius and why Sabine's character will be very interesting going forward. On your way out, please like and subscribe. Thank you.